Hello friends and fellow gamers, MKXJump here, and today we're going to be talking about some basic tips and tricks to get you started in Angel Legion. This is an idle game that's free to download on the Google Play Store and on the App Store, and it's also available on Steam. So if you want to go ahead and give it a try based on my advice today, please go ahead and download it. You can find a link down below in the description. And yeah, just to let you know, the people that made this game have sponsored the video as well, which is pretty cool. So if you're watching this either through Steam or YouTube or wherever, welcome. Good to see you, and hopefully this is going to be a good tutorial to give you a breakdown of what you need to know about Angel Legion. So let's get started with the basics. So the first thing you need to understand is this is a game that allows you to fully customize your characters to your heart's content. The first thing you'll get presented with is a full customization menu to make your main character look however you want her to. You can equip fashion items to her, which you can unlock through various game modes, and eventually you'll just unlock more and more customizable options for your heroes. And it's not just limited to this hero, every single hero in the game can be customized as well. This hero here, Mysterious Girl, also known as Maya, is unique to every single account. She not only has to be ran on everyone's team, she also has one of three artifacts that you can choose, which you will unlock progressively through playing the campaign. You have the scythe, you have the rifle, and you have the katana. These allow you to unlock additional bonus abilities with other heroes, which we will talk about later on. The aim of this game is to put together a team of six heroes to battle through the main quest. You also have a god which you can add to your team as well, which you get available to you once you hit the prerequisites to unlock them. We'll talk more about those very soon. Once you have your team of six, you can either fight in automatic mode, which will do all attacks for you, so they'll automatically do active skills when they have enough energy, and you can see here they are doing their attacks just fine. However, you can switch to manual mode and decide what your heroes do. This can be a basic attack, an active skill, which you can see in the middle, and there's also a UAV, which you'll unlock when your hero gets to Silver Star level three or higher. There are three UAVs to choose from, which we'll take a look at now. The first of these UAVs is the Protector. This gives you protection against attacks until the start of your next round, making your hero very, very difficult to kill. It's excellent in emergencies and can keep you safe. The next is the Hormone. This deals a little bit of damage to you, but in return, you deal more damage on the next attack you do. This can be useful if your hero is unable to do a lot of damage because perhaps they've been debuffed or you want to deal a lot of damage very quickly in the next round. As well, there's the Rescuer. This allows your heroes to heal and is very, very useful for keeping your people alive, especially if they're only going to be doing basic attacks, as this will allow them to heal back up and potentially gain a bit of energy, allowing them to do an active skill the next turn. That should be mentioned for all UAVs. Once they're fully upgraded, they do give you two points of energy, which can help you get active skills. Once UAVs have been used, there is a cooldown timer on them and you cannot use them until that timer is over. Heroes also benefit from a thing called armor. Armor comes in four forms. You have necklaces, gloves, chest pieces, and feet. They are of different tiers, with orange being the highest. And if you have a matching set, in this case you can see on my Hellscythe Jocasta, she has a full martial set, you will unlock different abilities seen in this right-hand column. With a matching set, you gain energy bonuses and also special bonuses such as this damage boost, which is unique to the martial set, and all the different sets in the game offer various things, such as an increase to hit, which improves your chance to hit enemies and stops them from dodging. You have things like crit, which increases your chance of getting a critical hit, which allows you to deal more damage. There's also damage reduction, crit resistance, and other great abilities that you can find if you get yourself a matching armor set. And the final bonus you can give to heroes are elves. These are little beings that live alongside your hero and give them special bonuses. The one here in particular increases the dodge of my Hellscythe, and there are various other ones that you can get that give other bonuses to your team. When you start the game, you'll get taken to the adventure mode, where you are presented with a map, and in that map you have a ship which can fly around and visit various locations. As you fly around, there's a chance that you can find these things called drift boxes, and these give you excellent rewards, and you can go ahead and click on anything that you can see on the map to activate it and interact with it. These could be fights or special chest items, which you can open later on, and as you do these things, you'll unlock progress in the progress bar. Once this is filled, you'll unlock different chests, which eventually lead up to this one here, which is 180, which will give you titanium 
and gems. The one at 160 is also pretty good as this gives you advanced recruit devices. Titanium is a very important resource that is used to go ahead to the cabin and upgrade the level of your ship. As your ship level improves, you unlock more events in adventure. You're also able to get more rewards from looting, which is a way that you can gain resources whilst you're not playing the game. And in addition, you unlock further bonuses to your buildings. Once your buildings increase in level, there's more things you can do, and the collectors will also have a higher level, which gets you more resources. One other thing that you can get to do by having a higher master cabin is improve the number of rewards you can get from combat support. When you start on a brand new server, such as Server 45, which just opened up now on Android, you won't see combat support. But as you play through, combat support will be added to events, and it's a way that you can gain coupons and spend them that week in this particular store. Make sure you spend them in that week though, because they will not carry over to the next event that follows. In the adventure mode, you also get to challenge the main quest. As you do this, you'll face 10 different stages in each chapter, eventually taking you to stage 10, which is a boss fight. Now, before you go ahead and leave into the next chapter, make sure you've gone ahead and cleared everything on the map such that you've brought the progress bar as far as it can go. This is really important when you're starting on as you'll be able to beat many chapter modes very quickly. If you don't want to go ahead and clear the whole map because you don't like the idea of flying around and clicking everything, you can instead click the cruise button which will do this all manually for you. As you level up you'll unlock the challenge menu and in this there are several different areas of the game which you can go ahead and enjoy. There's the arena mode which allows you to compete against other players in pvp fights and the best five players can be seen on this leaderboard right here. For a more in-depth leaderboard you can click the rank button and see where you rank compared to everybody else. The endless trial is a game mode where you can go ahead and fight multiple enemies to different stages. One cool thing about this game mode is that what you did in the previous fight carries over to the next. So if your hero is wounded, they will be wounded in the next fight as well. You can see there's different stages. Currently, I'm on stage 27, so there's 271, 272, 273, etc. Right up until the boss fight at 280. This boss fight will be challenging, but once beaten, you unlock the next chapter and can move on. And depending on how far you've managed to get, you will get yourself different rewards, which are pretty much a nice way of getting yourself triangle crystals, star coupons, and force, all of which can be used to upgrade the power of your heroes. So let's talk about how to upgrade heroes. Heroes require other heroes to be made stronger, as well as copies of themselves. So take, for example, this element sprite. Because I have 100 genes of her, I can unlock her and add her to my account. Once a hero is unlocked, a little notification will be given to everybody else on the server that you have done so, and you can now head to the Evolve menu to go ahead and level them up. First of all, you need to add B tier heroes to increase the strength of your hero, and this will take them up to a star level of Copper 1. You then want to proceed through adding more and more heroes. Here I can add further B tiers to improve our level, and that'll take it to Copper Star 2. Copper Star 3 requires you to have an A tier hero. You can either use A tier canisters like I have here or actually specific A tier heroes. It's recommended you use these to go ahead and improve the power level of your best heroes that you have, which will usually be S tier heroes as these are typically the strongest. We'll talk more about S tier heroes later on. Once you've evolved up your hero as far as you can go, you'll eventually get to a point where you have all five stars filled. In this case, for Element Sprite, she'll get to five star copper. To take her further, I now need an additional 100 copies of her, but sadly, I only have 40, so I can't improve her. But once I do, you can see here, they'll get taken to Silver Star. As you go through Silver Star, that'll require more A tiers to become stronger. So here you can see the Shy Girl, who is Silver Star, requires further A tiers to be improved. And eventually you'll get to a point where you've reached Silver Star 5. Once at Silver Star 5, you need 200 additional copies to improve that hero to gold. Once they are gold, you then have the choice of improving them not with A tiers this time, but S tiers. And this is where you need to decide which heroes you want to get rid of and which you want to keep. Once you've made that decision, though, you can go ahead and improve your heroes even further until finally you get to five star gold. To take a hero beyond five star gold, though, requires something special. You need to go to the cabin, 
the biological cabin and then head to the advanced menu where you can make an SS hero. So for example, if I wanted to take my five star Hellscythe to the level of SS, I would need a Hellscythe copy and an Executioner copy along with three other S tiers of my choosing that I would just put in here and then I can press advance to be given an SS copy of Hellscythe. That I can then go through to the menu give to my five-star Hellscythe and make her into an SS tier. From then, you improve the hero as normal using S tier heroes until you get to the additional ranks and beyond. This will require more SS heroes to do that though, so do bear in mind it can use a lot of food. So there's a question, which heroes do you want to keep and which do you want to get rid of? Well, S tier heroes are split into two categories. First of all, there are heroes that we can refer to as just basic normal heroes like Dragon Knight here. If you take a look at her skills and you click on the second one down, you'll see there is just a typical skill here. In the case of Dragon Knight, this deals 200% of physical attack to all enemies and has an 80% chance to silence them for one round. This is a nice ability. Silence is a type of CC that prevents heroes from doing their active skills. Very useful. However, some heroes, if you take a look at Dark Shooter, do something a little more special. So in the case of Dark Shooter's skills, you can see here she deals 450% of attack to a single enemy in the front row with a 60% chance to stun them. However, if Mysterious Girl, which was Maya, the hero everyone has to run, is equipped with the Blitz Sniper Rifle, which was one of those three artifacts we took a look at, she unlocks her combo skill, and this allows her to do an improved version of her active. In this case, you can see it causes stun and cannot be resisted. So what was originally a 60% chance to stun instead becomes a guaranteed stun. That is pretty excellent. Therefore, combo heroes, ones which synergize with Maya, are typically better to run. However, of course, you can only run one artifact on Maya. Some will require the scythe, some will require the rifle, others will require the katana. Therefore, it's down to you to decide how you build your team to best utilize a single artifact and the heroes that you have. The other type of hero is healers. Healers, there are only three of, which are Mental Healing, Ghost Princess, and Sakura Dancer. These do not do damage, instead they heal your team and make them better. It's my recommendation for early players that if you are struggling, it's good to have a gentle healer on your team and then either likely a priest, who you can see here, or a healing expert, who you can see just above me there. She is a good healer, as is priest, and they'll go alongside your gentle healer to make your other S tiers hopefully live. Don't be afraid to use A tiers at the beginning of the game, especially healers, as they can often help you beat tricky game modes. Do be warned though, A tiers can only be taken up to the rank of silver, so if you want anything a gold or potentially even SS tier, you are going to need to get yourself those S tier heroes to do that. Now let's talk about gods. These are additional allies that get added to your team and improve the power level of your heroes. They can be unlocked in specific ways. For example, Minotaur requires you to have a Silver Star Maya and a Silver Star Justice Knight. These must be specifically on your account to unlock Minotaur. So you cannot have them and then get rid of them. You must have them always on your account to be able to use that god. Medusa requires a Mysterious Girl and Magic Arrow, and then you can go through to see that Hercules and Pandora require four heroes instead of two, and eventually if you want to look at the more powerful gods, you have Ares here that I have unlocked, and as well you have Athena, who I am yet to get on this account. These require seven gold star heroes, that is quite hard to do as to get a hero to gold star, you require 400 copies of that hero, as well as all the food to get to that point, but once you do get all those heroes on your account, you unlock these gods who give exceptional exceptionally good bonuses. It is always best to aim for the most powerful gods you can, as these will drastically improve your team. Another way to massively improve the power of your team is through the Prey menu. The Prey menu lets you put in the heroes that you have and gives bonuses dependent on who you add. Combo heroes give the best bonuses, but you also gain additional benefits the higher the power level of your heroes. As well, there's the Resonance menu. This takes the six best heroes you have and allows you to auto-upgrade other heroes to the same level as the lowest 
of those best six. So take a look here. I have a hero that's level 210, 180, 170, 170, 170, and 160. So that means the heroes I put in here to resonate, as you can see, Phantom Blade and Ghost Princess, they have been taken up to level 160. In the case of this Sakura Dancer, because she cannot go up to 160 because she is only Silver Star, it is not possible for her to be taken any higher. And that is why it says she has reached her max level. It is my recommendation that you definitely utilize this to the best of your abilities, as it allows you to have many more heroes at a high level than you originally would be able to have. And the way to upgrade heroes can be quite expensive. So let's talk about that. If you go to training and press upgrade, you'll see it consumes gold and force. These are two very difficult to get resources. Also, if you go up high enough, it will consume this until you get to a point which is a unit of 10. In this case, heading to 190. And you will see that this now requires triangle crystals to improve. Do not be surprised if you find any three of these resources is a bottleneck in your progress. It is even normal for people who are spenders to struggle with getting enough of these resources. It's totally normal, expected, and is something designed in the game to encourage you to keep playing, grinding, unlocking more resources, and eventually allows you to level up your heroes to the best level that you can get. Of course, if you do choose to spend money on this game, you may advance so quickly that you just run out of all the resources you possibly have to go ahead and upgrade your heroes. So just do bear that in mind. It's not unusual to run out of these resources. If you go to the target menu, you'll see that you have daily missions which you can go ahead and complete. Make sure you claim all the rewards you can and do as many of these missions as you can, as you will get yourself bonus rewards every single day. There's also missions that you can go ahead and claim and complete across the week, and if you haven't done them, you can always go to the different game modes to complete them. There's also additional achievements which you can do one time. These will give you rewards as well. And then there's the Hunter Certificate, which as you progressively improve your progress throughout the month, will give you additional bonuses. Now the Hunter ID card is something you can choose to purchase and that will not only get you the bonuses from the Hunter certificate but also these additional bonuses you see on the right hand side which will get you S tier heroes and gems. If you do choose to spend on this game this is something definitely worth grabbing. Another thing for those of you that choose to spend money is the privilege cards. You can go ahead and find these by clicking the plus button next to diamonds and taking a look at the various resources available. Head to the sale manual and you can see that you can buy privilege cards and premium privilege cards, but these require these particular resources here called star dollars. You can grab these from the recharge menu and the more you choose to spend, the more star dollars you'll get for your money. As well, you can choose to spend gems on resource chests, which will improve the amount of resources you have on your account. I wouldn't recommend this for people who don't want to use a lot of gems or are free to play, but if you do spend a lot of money and find that you have a lot of gems, this might be something worth considering to move your account forwards. So how do we get hero copies? Well, hero copies can be obtained mainly from the recruit menu. Here you can use advanced recruit devices, normal recruit devices, and friend summons to go ahead and try your luck at getting heroes. Hearts have a pretty good chance of getting A tiers and B tiers. If you go and do basic summons, these are more likely to get you Cs and Bs. It's very rare that you get A or S tier heroes. But finally, there's this one in the middle called the advanced summon and is definitely worth doing. Advanced recruits have a good chance of getting you potentially even S tier heroes like I just did there, which was a punk guitar. Also, you're guaranteed to get four A tier heroes at least from every batch of 10. So make sure you're opening them in 10 batches wherever possible by clicking the try times 10 button as this will get you better bonuses. And if you're lucky, you can get yourself an S tier hero. Hopefully I can get one now. There we go. That's a raging angel. Very nice. If you click on the botting menu, this allows you to claim your rewards that you have got from the adventure mode. This is where you can get additional things like force, experience, which levels you up, and also the gold needed to level up your heroes. So clicking claim is always a good idea when you start to see this getting quite high. Make sure you log in frequently so that you can claim as many rewards as possible. In addition, there's the explore menu. This lets you send away heroes to go ahead and do missions to get you further resources. However, if the day resets whilst you are already away on a mission, which happens at 9pm at Universal, 
universal time, you will find that you aren't able to do that mission the following day. So make sure you get these in early, get them completed, and you're ready for the next day to come. Finally, there are chests. These are where you can go ahead and open the chests that you collect from campaign or for doing summons. And typically these level three chests are the best and you can go ahead and claim your rewards. And it typically takes 24 hours for these chests to open. So just put them in for the day, forget about them and go ahead and wait for ones to be claimable in the future. It's a pretty good habit to get into whenever you log in for the day. Now, every single week, you have things called events. These are additional ways to get yourself bonuses. You can get combat support cards, which we looked at earlier, which will allow you to buy things in the combat support shop. In addition, there will be special bonuses for the week. This may require you to spend money. It may require you to do various missions in the game. As well, there's potentially packages that you can decide to spend your money on. It's up to you whether you want these. And you may even find that there's a lucky way that you can go ahead and spend a ton of money to get yourself quickly copies of heroes or even armor sets. It depends how much you're wanting to spend as to whether this is worth it. But one thing I always try to look out for when spending is this. You can see you can grab advanced recruit devices. And these are always nice to pick up as they will allow you to summon heroes. So whenever they're available, it might be worth considering buying them. However, as I said, how much you want to spend is entirely up to you. The final part of the game we're going to take a look at is the Legion. Now, this is where you can go ahead and work not just on your own, but with a team of people. And these friends you can find on your server and work together to beat different enemies, such as the boss fights here, where you can send yourself in to attack and get their health down as a group. There's also a leaderboard where you can compete with one another, which is pretty cool. There's the Galaxy War, where you can go ahead and compete against the other Legions across the many servers in this game. And finally, there's the store where you can go ahead and buy yourself some cool rewards as a big thank you for helping out your Legion. I really recommend, if you can, to get your Legion to level 6. And if you're a master of a Legion, make sure you listen up, because a level 6 Legion is able to get advanced recruit devices from the shop. From that point, focus your attention on technology, because trying to upgrade technology will spend the experience of the guild. However, if you try to do this early, you'll be spending all your experience and preventing yourself from leveling up to level 6, which prevents you and your teammates from getting advanced recruits every day from this game mode. Another thing I like to do is pick up these mental healing genes because you can never have too many heroes. Finally, worshipping in the Legion is a really cool thing you can do to help your team out. If you're a spender, it's always a good idea to do the highest worship you can because this will give the guild as much XP and you as much honor as you can possibly grab. If you're a budget player though, I recommend using the advanced worship. The basic worship doesn't really give that much. Another really cool feature about the Legion is if people spend enough money, they are able to share gems with everybody else. So even if you're not a spender in the game, your friends who are are able to give you some really nice resources to help you buy things, and that will give you gems. And gems can be used in the marketplace, which you can find by clicking the mall. I like whenever possible to go ahead and buy advanced recruit devices and hero copies. You can tell there's a trend. I like to get as many heroes as I can, because the more heroes I have, the more powerful I can make my team. And there you go. Once you get a more powerful team, you can head back into the adventure, continue on with the main quest, and push yourself as far as you can try to go. In addition, you can go and try and beat these different challenge modes here and become the most powerful person in your server, or at least try to beat everybody. There's so many different game modes to go ahead and fight, such as the simulated alpha, where you can do a competition to see who can do the most damage. There's the battlefield, where you beat various enemies and try and get as powerful as possible. And eventually, if you get far enough here, you can go ahead and improve the power level of Mysterious Girl Maya, which will not only improve your whole team, but make you better because you have to run that specific hero, so it's best to get her as powerful as you can. In addition, there's the Military Match, which is another PvP game mode, but competes against loads of people from all over the game. And then there's the Expedition, which is something where you can go ahead and fight different enemies. And as you beat game modes, you'll eventually unlock items in the exchange store. And I recommend saving the currency that you grab until you're able to pick up a hero copy like I can right here and get yourself more heroes for your account. Potentially, you might even find advanced recruit devices here, which is super duper useful. So there's lots to think about. 
whether you want to improve the power levels of your hero through their armor, maybe through the prey, or collecting as many heroes as you like to put together the most versatile selection of teams, it's really up to you how you approach this. There's loads of really cool heroes in the game, and because everyone has to use Mysterious Girl Maya, but they can not use all the different combo heroes because they're only allowed to use one artifact, there are lots of different teams that are viable and work well. Experiment around, find the heroes you like, and go ahead and upgrade your team to make them as powerful as possible. And let me know how you find this game in the comments section down below. Hopefully this was a useful crash course. If you have any more questions, let me know. And hopefully I'll see you on the Angel Legion servers. Don't forget to give it a download. It's free to play. You don't have to spend any money to give it a go. And I'll see you next time. Have a great week, guys. Happy Island.